Hello everyone, uh, my name is Federica Gazzelloni and I am going to uh, do the screencast on uh, the Oregon Spotted uh, dataset um, from Tidy Tuesday Week 31. So I've made many models on this dataset to find uh, the best one. So we are going to uh, to have a look at the models and see what are the results. So this is uh, a very nice data set and um, it's uh, basically from um, uh, the sciencebase.gov website, the US Science Agency for the Department of Interior and uh, you can find them on Twitter as well at uh, USDS. So this data set is um, uh, about radio telemetry and um, this radio telemetry has been used to study late season movement and habitat uh, used by Oregon spotted frogs, uh, type Rana Preziosa. And they are located, basically the main site is uh, the Crane um, Prairie Reservoir in Oregon. And this data set includes individual uh, frog location data and uh, habitat use during each tracking event that occur roughly weekly between September and late November 2018. So you can find more information about the study, the author study here, and I'll put them on the, um, on the description later. So basically what we are going to, to do is uh, making models with uh, tidy models. So we the library, we need a tidy verse, tidy models. Uh, in this uh, screencast, we do a few things for granted. So like, you know about tidy models, you know about tidy verse, of course, you know about uh, how to deal with data and everything. Um, afterwards, if you have any questions uh, after you have looked at the information, everything you can ask. Uh, um, you, you find all the detail in the description. So we might need a few more packages like baguette, rules, tune, and fine tune. So make sure you have them uh, loaded and in installed and loaded. So this is the data set from the um, uh, Tidy Tuesday. Uh, GitHub repo, and uh, we can have a quick look at it. So we have very short time. So the, the, the procedure for making many models is very long. So we are going a bit fast. So this is a, a section of the uh, data set. You see this, the, this is the main site, uh, the reservoir, and then we have the sub site. So, so they are in the pond and the reservoir. And, different section like south, west, uh, north, uh, north, east, and east. So then the habitat, which is very important, and uh, there are three, like pond, river, and reservoir. Then we have the survey data, as I said, from September to late November 2018. These are the days of the year. Uh, and then we have uh, frequencies. So we have 32 dif different frequencies. They have been used quite a certain number of times to a maximum of 13 times uh, for a certain frequency and to a minimum of three for another frequency. The, these uh, are uh, the um, uh, geolocation uh, for, for the, wh where the, the frogs have been located. This is from the equator, so like the distance in meter from the equator, and the other one is distance from the north, so respectively they are uh, longitude and latitude. Then we have intervals, so we don't mm, look at that very much. So uh, we look at females, so the gender of the frogs, and they are zero, which is the reference, uh, so female. And uh, one is uh, male, so it's a binary vector, and we use that um, because um, I think so. The main objective is to identify uh, what is the probability for finding a female or male um, 
in this crane reservoir. So there is some specification about water, water type, structure, and um, sub substrate, and if there's any beavers, where are they, in which situation they, and finally, very important uh, vector as well is detection. So some of the frog have been captured, some are not visualized, and other visualized. So let's uh, scroll down and see, you see the subsite, how it's subdivided, the uptight, so the habitat, it's pond, reservoir, and river. This is very important. So this is a very important driver of, of this data set. So these are the frequencies, like 32 different frequencies. Some of them have been used more than others. And we have um, water type, uh, type uh, and again structure and substrate so we have seen all these things if there's beaver where are they in the bottom the channel uh, or no beaver at all low journal beaver and then finally the detection so very quick, very quick tidy to the frog it's janitor clean names then set up the date as a date and then, as I said, I want to work on a female vector, so the gender of the frogs, so I make it as a, fa as a factor. Then arrange it by the day of the year, uh, not need of the site because it's just one, uh, one vector, one variable. And then uh, a little specification for the visualization value. So this is uh, what changed a bit. The date now is the date type. So, we have few observations, so we can do many things, but for now, just have a look at tidy models, how it works with few models and few uh, re uh, recipes all together and see what's happened. So we have 311 observations. Uh, so what we do is a first quick uh, visualization to see the female, our re uh, response variable, how it is basically composed in our data set. So as you can see, we have a few females compared of men. So this is quite imbalanced response variable. So we might have to think about that, how to work it out, this imbalance. Um, so first thing, starting with, um, as I said, I like to answer this bit of question. How many females are the um, um, females? I mean, what is the probability to catch a female more than a man in this data set? Okay, so we split the data and set the seed uh, because it's a random splitting. We have very few, so it's, it's a short data set. But uh, so imagine we, we have captured very few uh, frogs. Instead, the other are all no visual, they're just heard, and the others are uh, visualized. So I made this proportion like 90% training set and just a 10% of test set. So we do stratify by female vector and then uh, make the training and the testing set. So this data set, um, after a quick exploration, so I see it's a classification uh, problem. So we want to uh, identify the gender uh, and uh, the class is a bit unbalanced. So uh, I think I'm going to do a logistic regression, a random forest and a K nearest neighbor. Uh, so we set up the three models very uh, fast and nicely leaving the tuning things there so we tune them uh, we can do pulse nip on the admin uh, once you have uh, installed tidy models so you can click on this one and select your model so it releases um, the model specification for you in uh, um, in the script uh, so once we have set the model specification for the logistic regression engine GLM, the nearest neighbor engine KNN, and the random forest uh, uh, 
with Ranger as engine because it's faster. So we want to now we have settled uh, this um, um, model specification, and what we do is now setting some few few uh, okay. Um, I uh, add so this library because um, it let me use the step down sample function which is the one that i'm going to use what is the uh, this step down sample so the as i said the response variable is quite unbalanced so i'm going to step down sample so making it a bit more balanced okay this is a controversial um, argument because once you have uh, down balanced uh, down sampled uh, your uh, training set and um, you might want to use a cross validation you might have to think about that because it's it's a, a substantial modification of the um, of the set so we uh, make a recipe uh, this is let's say our basic uh, our um, starting point uh, recipe with a step down sample okay so now on the response variable so now what we need to do is to create a, a new data training data set uh, with this uh, which it, that it, it take, takes care of the down sample uh, structural change so we do uh, prep and juice on uh, this basic receipt so we have a new uh, training data set down sampled so this is our first um, main modification. Let's run this and let, let's run this a little bit. So the second recipe is a normalized recipe. So we do step date, step core, step dummy, step zero variance, and step normalized. So this is um, the base for making principal component or just leave it like that. So we, we test few recipe on those, the above three models. Then we do the recipe PCA with all predictors, which start from the normalized recipe. And then we do step interact from the normalized, not the step PCA, from the normalized, we do step interact on frequency and the app type because uh, we will see in fact using step pca that the habitat it's a very important driver for for the plot um, let's uh, finish with the recipes so we do the spline recipe uh, on uh, longitude we can use longitude and latitude but that would be like sort of redundant so we can use just latitude that would be uh, okay and then i've made a spline tool which is not taking care of the down sample and it's on the training uh, okay so this is uh, the same uh, receipt but not down sample so as I told that I made a step to interact on the habitat, on frequency and habitat, I made that because looking at the principal component analysis, so you know that I can visualize uh, larger dimensional data to see how they group. Okay, so if I select uh, PC1 and PC2 and then bind with the training juices. Uh, and then plotted, you see that they group nicely, okay? Pond, reservoir, and river, even if they are female or male. So the habitat is a very important driver. Okay, so I made a step interact with this uh, uh, recipe here, which is taking care of the habitat and the frequency. Okay, now as all our recipes and uh, models are not tuned, we can have a, a quick look at how to make, uh, we don't have much time, but uh, if, if you want to see, for example, the spline can be tuned, um, 
And uh, to do that, the degree of freedom can be tuned. And to do that, uh, I've used the neural network, so the multilevel perception engine, Keras, to um, tune the spline. So if I uh, run this uh, all together, and then uh, um, we can see that uh, I uh, uh, obtain from 1 to 15 about the degree of freedom that I can use in my spline step. Okay. So now I'll, 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 mm, I'll uh, take uh, care of that later. So now that I have quite an idea of what is happening, um, I do cross-validation because a very short data set and I need some resampling things and some things to, to have a, a wider range of, of the result. So this uh, um, will be uh, on my Jewish train set, uh, certify females, uh, 10 folds and repeated five times. So this is the result, very, very, uh, short, but by okay. So now what we need to do is make two lists because we have many models, we have many um, recipes. So we set up a list for recipes for with all the, our six recipes and a list of models with our three models. I haven't used the multi perception then. So I set up a workflow. Uh, with the recipes and the model, and then I want them to be crossed. So I have all random forest tested with six recipes, or logistic regression tested with all recipes, and Kenyan tested with all recipes. Set up parallel processing, and then now uh, this is to save the bread. I use control grid to save the prediction parallel over everything and uh, save the workflow. This would be needed afterwards for extrapolating the result. So then this is the model. So as you can see now, I don't know if you can see, um, I can uh, like put it here and maybe you can um, have a look at it a bit clearly. And this is uh, um, Okay, so this is the the bit I, I won't um, I won't run because it takes like about an hour. So I've saved the result here. So you have this many model workflow that we have just made with the workflow set, and then I map the workflow, setting the seed, setting the resample with the cross validation with the Jewish data set. Then 25 grid, the control grid, and verbose true to see what's happened when it's working on the model, so I can see what's happened. So these are the result, grid result. We, um, okay. So the result, and um, Okay, so we have uh, our logistic model on basic, normalized, PCA, interact re uh, recipe, and so all the other KNN, random forest, the options, the result, and so the result are here. So here I, I wanted to look at the number of grids, they are like certain number, and now uh, build a uh, rock. Cube, so a receiver uh, operator cube. So I, to do that, I need to unnest the result, which is this vector here. Once the result is unnested, I need to unnest again the prediction. And now I can select the workflow, which is the model's ID, the pred for zero, the female, the pred for one, for male, the pred for class, because these are different. So this will be, the two will be uh, between zero and one, and they are like 
if this is 30%, this other one will be 70%. So they um, uh, all together, if you, you have 100%. So for sure, or one or, or another will, will be there. This is the pred class, which is the prediction, our outcome. So it's our prediction of our response variable. Okay, so we can use group by models and with the yardstick uh, and the rock curve, calculate the rock curve. So now I'm going to run this so we can see that uh, once we have the, the rock information, which contains specificity and sensitivity, we can set up a visualization and uh, to do that, uh, so we do uh, geom line um, and uh, where is it? There it is. So as you can see, specificity one minus specificity and uh, sensitivity gives us a rock curve or for different models. So now the colored ones are random forests, uh, while the other ones are k and logistic regression, which are uh, all of them uh, quite below the random forest. So uh, obviously, we uh, chose a random forest as a, as a model. And ranking the result, so from the grid result, we rank the result, we see that the model 21 with the interact uh, receipt uh, of the random forest is the best one. We have an accuracy of 97% and uh, an area under the curve of 99. So again, we can have a look uh, at the ranking things and we can see the uh, quite variability on the others and very few variability on the random forest. Uh, now, here, uh, I haven't got much time, uh, can, much more can be said. So with extract workflow set result, we can see what are the hyperparameters for this model 21, which is the best. So we have 20 m try uh, by about 1,300 trees and mean and five. So we can use this uh, so we can extract the workflow that we have saved with grid control um, from the result, and then finalize the workflow using our best other parameters here. So this is where we do last last fit on the split, which is not which is not uh, juiced, so down sampled. Okay, and uh, now. We collect the prediction and we do a conf mat and an auto plot to see the mosaic. So we do confusion matrix and see how well we have predicted females, which are zero reference, and male one. Okay, I need to go fast. Then again, like testing uh, the result, we can like final fitted. On this random forest test result, which is this one here, and again, is this one here? We want to see. Um, okay. So, what is it? Takes a bit. Okay, so this is it. So we can collect the prediction or extract the workflow. Okay, we extract the workflow, we see what's inside. And then what we can do is we can predict on the test set. So I have selected like the first 14 rows. This might be not successively, uh, you know, uh, but uh, uh, on average, 37% will be female and 63% will be male. Um, we can check the predictions, see they match, 
some damage. So it's, it's a, uh, apparently quite good model for this data uh, on this type of response variable. And then uh, uh, we can even see on average what's happened with capture, no visual, and then you can have a look at the habitat and everything in, that you might. So I've made uh, a few other considerations. And then finally, uh, the variable importance, you can load the library and see test result, extract the workflow, extract the fit um, parsnip, and then um, I, to do that, you need to take the receipt, interact, the one that uh, it is the one that is the preferred one. And then prep and bake. So these are the data that we use. Then I've taken the random forest and set up the random forest with the other parameters that I have found above. So 20 and try, min end, and trees, and everything. And fit on this data, the recipe interact. And then found the variable importance. As you can see, the results are that frequency on habitat, um, river, is the most important variable. Then the frequency, obviously, is important. And then frequency on habitat reservoir is the third one. And then we have the latitude and the longitude, the, the river, and so on and so forth. So uh, apologies, I couldn't do more, but if I put some other extra information in the description, and uh, I don't know if you have any questions, uh, you can send me an email or uh, contact me on Twitter. Bye now.